My name is Alfonso Davis. On behalf of the Southside Coalition for Citizen, uh, Southside Coalition Citizens for Justice and Equality, along with the Greater Syracuse Southside Neighborhood Association, we have put together a series of political forums for those various candidates who have been running for political office. The district counselors, comptroller, county clerk, the uh, county executive seat, and to come on the 19th would be the district attorney. And so our goal and sole purpose is to bring people to the candidates so that you see who's running, what they're about, and whether or not if they represent the representation that you want. So when you go to the poll and vote, you make an informed decision on who you choose as your next county exec or whatever office that you're, any office that particular people are running for. Um, as you can see, Mr. Bill Kennedy is here. Ryan McMahon, I found out today through our group and through the Franklin that he had scheduled a press conference for something. That's neither here nor there. I spoke to him a month ago and I spoke to his team on the 28th. They're not here. We're moving forward because we're not going to waste your time and we're not going to waste his time and we're not going to waste anyone's time. So with that being said, we thank you for coming. We're going to move forward with this process. I would like to introduce to you our moderators, Mr. Derek Dorsey, former Commissioner of Education, a Corcoran grad. Yes, sir. I've known this gentleman for a very long time, very intellectual individual who is very much a part of this community and cares a lot. The next moderator is Karen Franklin. She and I go back, my wife actually used to work for Karen a while back. Karen is, if you ever heard her saying she has an angelic voice, you still sing Karen? No. <laughs> She's a great singer, um, and I've always loved to hear her sing and appreciate her and the work that she has done in this community. So those are our two moderators. Um, you'll hear this bell, but since we don't have a, another person, Oh, that's for me. You don't have another person, but you'll hear the bell. Um, and, and just the ground rules, and, and, and they're simple. You know, if you got a question for Bill Ryan, he just asks that you, you know, once they go through the various questions, if you got a question, he just asks that you come to the mic and just be respectful. If you got a statement, 30 seconds, and then a question can follow with the statement. But from this point on, everything that takes place is going to run through these two people right here. Mr. Uh, Franklin King and Mr. Derek Dorsey. So with that being said, again, welcome and thank you for being here. Yeah. We call you Bill or Mr. Kinney? Bill works. Bill works? Okay. Bill's good for me. Okay, thank you. First question is, uh, if, if elected, would you indicate what the top three priorities would be? What top three issues would you concentrate on? I know it's hard to narrow it down, but if you could make it three top issues. Well, thank you very much for having me here, first of all. I'm uh, very disappointed that uh, the county exec is not here and he chose to be out in Tisco to make some type of an announcement. Uh, but it is what it is, so uh, thank you folks for showing up tonight. Uh, my top three priorities, uh, the first thing I would try to do is uh, stop the aquarium, if it's possible. That all depends on uh, contracts and financial matters. Um, and I would try to stop that. Other than that, uh, it's 2023 and it'll be 2024 soon. I think we have a terrible uh, housing crisis in this community, and I want to work on that. Uh, there's a county in Maryland called Montgomery County that they invested $100 million to work with the private sector to form a uh, partnership to build houses and apartment buildings for uh, people that have income um, that is not, they're not able to meet the uh, high income, high rent prices here in central New York. 
Uh, I want to work on lead. I think it's a shame that we haven't taken this uh, money that we have and um, spent it on solving this problem once and for all. I mean, in this budget we just passed, I, I did vote for it. It was a struggle because there's $13 million for new docks out of Dugga Lake Park, which I have nothing against that, okay? But I have a problem with when we ask for an extra um, approximately 250000 for more lead for the lead program we were denied. I, I just think that uh, our priorities are not right. And third, and not least really, um, but we have an infrastructure problem in this community and I want to work on that. Uh, we need to have a plan, a solid plan, just not a piecemeal plan for year after year, but a plan to fix our infrastructure. Thank you. So stop the aquarium, housing crisis, um, lead poisoning, and infrastructure. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Bill. Derek. So, so Bill, uh, in my opening remarks, I, I uh, said that we're trying to really have an intimate conversation. So I want to back up a half step. Um, for those that don't know me, um, could you share a few things about yourself? Maybe your passion for public service, uh, your family, um, your 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 life, your upbringing was here. Just a little bit about yourself, so they can get an opportunity to know who you are. Okay, absolutely. Well, um, I'm a graduate of Corcoran High School, in 1974. Uh, my four daughters went to Corcoran High School and graduated from here. My wife Beth is in attendance tonight, and uh, we met playing tennis down in the valley. Um, she graduated from Bishop Lawton, but I don't hold that against her. <laughs> uh, um, like I said, we had four children. I grew up on Ostrander Ave in the city of Syracuse. I played, uh, McKinley Park is my backyard, but I spent quite a bit of time at Van Dyne and Dirt Park, and um, um, just in the whole neighborhood, Elmwood Park. I mean, I'm very familiar with this whole area. I, I have a degree from OCC uh, in criminal justice, and I have my bachelor's in administration of justice from Arizona State University. Um, I worked at Alcare Student Center, which is a job I absolutely loved, uh, but unfortunately didn't pay very much, and my family was growing, so I went back to uh, Green Hills Farms, where I worked uh, to save money to go to college. Uh, they gave me an opportunity. Um, that opportunity disappeared in uh, 1993. I was elected on Tuesday, had my birthday on Wednesday, and lost my job on Friday. So it was a tough week. Uh, at least Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But uh, I started my own business, Bill Kinney Property Management Services. I've been doing that. I, I was fortunate enough, the people in this community blessed me. They first elected me to the county legislature in 1992. And every two years after that, until 2009, I was reelected to my 10th term. Unfortunately, in 2010, in March, I had a uh, uh, health incident, and the five doctors advised me that I should uh, step away uh, from politics. Um, but I wanted to finish my term, which I did. But in the political cycle, back then, you had to let your party know in March if you were going to run again. And so, um, <laughs> okay. Apologies, we didn't we didn't make that known, but we were trying to move the program along. This is our wonderful timekeeper. <laughs> that was that was more inclined for if there were two of you. So thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> and and so my last piece, um, circling back to that question, is uh, what is your passion? Uh, my passion is helping people. I've done it my whole life. Uh, um, my oldest brother's 10 years older, so by the time he was out of the house when the phone rang, and I was the next boy in the house, it was always, Mrs. Kinney, would you send Bill Kinney over to do something? And that's what I did. And then uh, just kept on doing it throughout my entire life. Okay, now this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, a 30,000 foot question for you. Um, what are your plans to enhance the city of Syracuse, if you're able to get elected? 
Well, you know, um, I hope to be elected. I plan on being elected. Um, but once you're the county executive, you still have to deal with the legislature. The legislature, unfortunately, in my eyes, is very, um, they're, they're, they're very suburban oriented and think that the city gets too much as it is. Uh, I find that a uh, lousy attitude, to be honest with you. Uh, my goal would be to help the city with uh, two things, mainly safety and education. Now, um, both of those would be hard to do without the support of the legislature. Um, the uh, safety part would be easier because we have a sheriff that's a Democrat and wants to do good, wants to help the people. Uh, the education thing, there's all kinds of laws that we have to deal with, but um, I think, um, you know, mental health services, uh, social workers, things like that we could do. We do a little bit now. I think we need to do a lot more. But again, we need the help of the legislature to <laughs> buy into the program. So we're going to take a deeper dive with some of those things that you mentioned, uh, poverty. Um, but at this time, we want to talk a little bit about your economic plan. And what is your plan to deal with the unemployment levels? <coughs> or let's say the other way, of increase in employment in the city of Syracuse. Or even not about the county, but the city of Syracuse is <coughs> what the constituents wanted to hear this evening. We need to find some way to um, get people to the table. Now, some people don't have rides, so we need to work on that. Some people lack the skills, so we need to find what they would like to do and find a way to train them. We have a small training program now. Uh, some of the unions have been very helpful in that regards, but we need to expand that. Um, with everywhere I go, people are looking for work, and we need to find a way to get people into those jobs. I don't have a silver bullet, but I would certainly work with people. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer that there's a lot of people out there that are knowledgeable in all different areas. And I would bring them into my administration in some fashion to help me do things that we want to accomplish. Thank you. You mentioned that housing was one of the top three or four issues that you would address. So let's talk a little bit about uh, efforts that could be made to create affordable housing within the city um, and the county um, as a whole. If you could create a plan, what, what would it be? I'm sorry, did you say, did you say mm -hmm. Affordable housing. Yeah. Um, if you could create a plan, what would that plan be for affordable housing within the city and the county as a whole? My daughter, one of my daughters lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and she waited about a year and a half to get into a, uh, uh, a building that had uh, all levels of income in the building. Uh, but it was set up so that uh, the, um, the lower the income, you know, there, there, was, there was rules for everybody, but it was a safe, secure building, and uh, there was a place for parties, but you had to, you know, rent the room in advance and things like that. I think one of the problems we try to do in, uh, in this community is we try to put people into places that don't match. I would try to work to get places to match. By that I mean, you know, if you're a single mother and have four kids, you don't want to really necessarily be in a two bedroom apartment. That's a little tough, um, but you're entitled to good housing. Um, I would like to have a program like that, that work with the private sector and uh, have programs like that. For the housing, again, we need the private sector help, but we're in a capitalistic society uh, builders want to make money, so and that's, they have a right to make money. But government can help by creating funds and programs that um, help people to build homes and have a, I'd say, tax incentive is what I'm looking at. So uh, that's what I would try to do. Thank you. So in light of the recent shootings um, and deaths in the city of Syracuse, what are some of your ideas uh, and plans, or even an agenda, of dealing with public safety? And part two to the question, Bill, is building relationships between the community 
and law enforcement? I'm a firm believer that your law enforcement should look like your community. You know, I mean, we need to hire more people of color. There's no, there's, it's real simple, we need to do that. Um, but to go back to your first part, um, I, um, I really feel sorry for those parents that lost their child. Uh, I have first-hand experience losing a child, not through violence, but uh, you know, it's a, it's a terrible, terrible thing. So my heart goes out to them. Um, but it's very frustrating to know that uh, the camera was not on when that uh, deputy pulled his gun. And to me, I think that's uh, reprehensible, especially since the past sheriff uh, had the ability to institute that and for whatever reason failed to do it. Uh, so I'm hoping that the present county executive and the present legislature will put the money in place to get this program started. If they don't, I will do it. When an officer pulls their gun or taser, there should be a camera. I think it was in the paper the other day, even the sheriff thinks it helps the officers, not hurts them. And I'm, I believe in that. Um, so, to your second again, uh, you know, we need to have more people of color, uh, but more importantly, we need to find a way for the police officers and the sheriffs to be out in the community meeting people so there's a better understanding. Um, you know, I, I don't know really how we would do that, but I would work with the sheriff, I'd work with the chief of police, see if we can't come up with some way to do that. Um, it, 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 look at uh, the three goofiest words I ever heard in my life probably were defund the police. You know, we all want police, we need law enforcement. If you have something bad happen in your life and you need help, you want an officer there, okay? But maybe we don't need a police officer in an instant. Maybe we need people that are there for you know, a family squad, for instance. Uh, we, we need to have the resources to do that, of course. So, so your life experience shapes your truth, right? So you have experience in growing up on the south side of Syracuse. Um, Reimagine what would be a couple of things that you could do. Dream um, of really building that relationship. How would, how would you go about doing something like that? And, and, and actually speak to the people that are, are, are concerned about their safety. I'm still a Southside resident, um, but, and, and concerned about the relationships be, between law enforcement and the community. Just, just dream, what, what would that look like? How could you, what would be a couple of things? Help us out. Well, one thing that's always bothered me, um, neighborhoods are much better when home, people own the homes. Um, there's a lot of rental property out here in the city. There's nothing wrong with that if the landlord is responsible, okay? Uh, we find too often that the landlord, um, there's a home down on Valley Drive near the old Our Lady of Lourdes. It's now a uh, charter school. And it's right next, right near there, that the man in Texas owns it. And, you know, the side was falling in, the roof side roof was falling in. Uh, people were parking all over the place. Um, Garbage was all over the place. Um, and not just once in a while, on a regular basis. And I know that because part of my job was taking care of the property next door. Um, you know, that, that's not good for any neighborhood, okay? Yeah, you, you certainly don't find it out in the suburbs. Uh, or if you do, very, very little. Um, so I would try uh, to work with the city codes department to have a more enforcement of the codes and hold these landlords accountable. Um, but more importantly, I think, is I try to have homes. People, you know, you know that's the sure way out of poverty is owning a home. Everyone recognizes that. Uh, some people can't afford it. Maybe we can just find a way we can help them get in there. But once they get in there, they gotta take care of it. So we gotta make sure they can do that. Um, that's a dream I have. <laughs> you know, home ownership for as many people as possible. So there's, and Karen, I'm gonna follow up one really quickly. So there's violence that takes place in the suburbs that spills its way into the city and from the city into the suburbs. That, you know, it just, just, it's not happening in a silo, right? So it spills both ways. The city is within the county, and you know that. Uh, what, what 
is it that you could do a plan in dealing with some of the violence that exists? Um, the audience here wants to hear about the city, but you could even make it broader talking about violence in the, in the county as well. Well, um, you know, I'm not proud of it, but I was in a few scuffles when I was younger, uh, but there was never a gun or a knife pulled. I, you know, we have too many guns out there. Um, that's a tough question. Uh, violence, you know, I mean, certainly a better education would help. Uh, certainly um, some type of program to uh, prevent things from reaching the violent stage. Um, but again, you know, I, I'm not an expert, so I would work with people, try to find people that have ideas that are workable, and listen to them, and then try to bring everyone along with me. Dovetailing on that, because of the, the violence, the isolation that came out of the uh, um, COVID, um, so many things that our young people and young adults are going through has caused uh, an increase in trauma. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no mental health department within the county government. How do our young people and families gain access to affordable mental health professionals? Well, unfortunately, the uh, Republican legislature Republican County Executive in years past, they did away with the mental health department. Uh, I think that was a major mistake. Um, but we also do have a severe shortage of mental health workers. We have to recognize that. Um, maybe we should have a program uh, offering to uh, help work with Lemoyne and Search University and have a program to, uh, you know, if people want to get involved in that field and they stay in the county for a set period of time, you know, maybe 10 years or five years, that, you know, we could talk about it, but we would pay for their education, pay their loans off. Uh, you know, it's done in other areas, it's done for other programs. I mean, we need uh, mental health workers, we need laborers, we need doctors, um, but I think we have to help our young students, our young children, cope with all these problems that they're having. You know, the family of today, unfortunately, is not the family of, you know, 60, 70 years ago. This, you know, that, that's not, you know, happening. Um, and we need to <coughs> help everyone strive to be the best they can be and also respect everyone's rights and privacy too. When I tried to do a little bit of homework um, on the mental health issue, um, I was told that contracts um, are made with different agencies um, and to have them go out into the schools and such. Is that something you're familiar with or that you can give us some insight on? Well, we have a lot of contracts that go out. In fact, it's one of the problems I have the way we do our budget. There is a large pot of money. And for instance, I can't give you the exact total, but for instance, I'm a big believer in a program called Tiny Homes for Good. Some of you may have heard that. And uh, two years ago, three years ago, I asked for money for them. And um, I was told that the county executive was going to give them approximately $200,000. They got that money. I could not find it anywhere in the budget. Just couldn't find it. Last year, they got about $350,000. Can't find it in the budget. When I, me and a couple of those legislators finally pinned the budget people down, they said it's in one lump sum of money and it depends on how much the state will give us. So it's not even a program that is uh, based on county dollars, it's based on state money, which is kind of ironic in my eyes because of the legislature, the county executive, always complaining about the mandates that we have in this community from the state. And yet, on the other side now, we're getting all this money to do things. Uh, it's, it's, I've always thought, thought that that was a, a terrible way to look at things. So, I know Catholic Charities, I know um, Salvation Army, 
I know the rescue mission, they all get grants, and some of that is for mental health services. I know there's at least, I believe, a few other agencies, I can't think of off the top of my head, but so that's how we do it. Um, but, you know, when, when you give a grant, uh, you're, you're not, you're cutting our payroll, which you know, we want to keep taxes as low as we can, but you're giving it to them and, and they're not able to find people at certain levels of pay uh, because it's just not enough. So we have to, I think, look at that. Um, why? I don't know anyone who likes to pay taxes, all right? But we all want things. You know, we want clean water. We want, when you flush your toilet, to not have a sewer backup. You want roads plowed, maintained. You want the bridges fixed. Uh, you know, I, I received a lot of complaints over the last year about shopping town, for crying out loud, because the county executive has failed to maintain that property. You know, we took it over, it's our responsibility, but he hasn't, he hasn't maintained it. So, I mean, we've got the money, we got the staff, and if we don't have the staff, shame on him, because he's the one that cut the budget. So as far as mental health is concerned, there's really no oversight. Uh, if I'm fortunate enough to win, I would have completely different uh, oversight of how things are done. I'm not a micromanager, but I would make sure that my uh, people in charge know exactly what I want done and how to do it. I mean, uh, just, I humbly, they're all nice people, but I humbly disagree with the way things are done. And we'll, we'll get to the question on transparency later, because that's, that's the whole thing that uh, leads to um, those issues of where is the money going and the, uh, uh, the surplus and the accountability for that. So we'll, we'll, we will get to that. Um, but speaking of money, the um, central New York area uh, has some of the highest levels of poverty in this country, shame on us. Shame on, shame shame on, us. on us. But it, what is the plan? What do you envision? I know that Derek asked about uh, uh, what would you dream of, but what plan would you, could you devise to eradicate poverty? I know that you talked about the tiny homes, you talked about, and then you mentioned owning a home helps to eliminate poverty. But if there was a plan to eradicate poverty, really something that we could sink our teeth into and understand, what would that be? Well, again, I would reach out to people that are experts in the field, see what we're doing wrong, what we're not doing, what we're doing that could be adjusted. I mean, it, it is shameful that we're the number one poverty in the country. It's, we all ought to be, you know, very upset about that. Um, but again, there's no silver bullet, but we, we need to look to how other counties, other states are doing things. Um, you know, you get a job, we, you can get to employ people and we gotta train them. I mean, it's, it's not just one simple thing, but I would work towards that. I'd work towards helping people get employed and uh, having a job so that they get out of poverty. So, Bill, a high level question again is, uh, you, you do realize uh, the nature of having a productive and healthy relationship with city government. Uh, just what would that look like for you and how would you approach that? Well, the first thing I would do once I'm elected is I would sit down with the mayor uh, we have to have a, uh, a, a better understanding of what we want to accomplish. Uh, and in this city, uh, the mayor is strong and the council is weak. Um, I apologize, if the council is strong, the mayor is weak. It's just the opposite in the legislature and the county. Um, it's a county strong executive. Um, but I think we need to have a partnership. You know, you live in the city of Syracuse, you're part of Onondaga County. A lot of people seem to forget that, and they're elected to officials in my eyes. And I know that for first-hand experience over the years, I've worked with a lot of good people on both sides of the aisle. But unfortunately, some of the people on the Republican side of the aisle um, aren't really too keen about helping the city. Um, so, 
I would sit down with the mayor. I would talk to the common councilors. Uh, I would certainly try to sit down with whoever the majority leader is going to be for the Republicans, because uh, it looks like uh, you know there's no way the Democrats are going to take control of the county legislature. So I would sit down with them, the majority leader and the, uh, the uh, chairman of the legislature. Uh, you have to work together to solve these problems, no matter where they are. Uh, I'm a big believer in collaboration. But you know, uh, uh, there was a group in 2016, I believe, uh, made up of all kinds of individuals. Um, the mayor's father was on the committee, the consensus report. Uh, that, that had a lot of good ideas in it. And how many of them have we done? None. I think there was 53 or 54. Uh, people are afraid to take chances, I think. Um, we got to, this community will only grow if we're all succeeding. And uh, the people that uh, are out in the suburbs that don't think uh, their problems will get there are mistaken. And the people out in the suburbs that come into the city to use our roads, our water, our sewer system, um, you know, it's, it's not right that they can come in and then leave and yet have all those things out there that they don't have to worry about. Uh, there has to be a better collaboration between the city and the county. It just has to be. Um, so you mentioned the water supply, you mentioned the flushing of toilets a couple of times, which is great. Um, I, uh, my question is about my property. That was our alarm to let us know that we're going to be wrapping up. Um, <laughs> Uh, Micron actually made some decisions to move to this area because of the water supply. Uh, what are some of the ideas or what plans do you have to safeguard our precious water supply in this area? So not only for the children, but for the adults that live here as well. Well, one thing that uh, people fail to realize is that we lose a lot of water from Skinny Atlas Lake to get to the first reservoir. A lot of water. And I think that's terrible. Shame on us. I mean, we have a lot of water in this community, a lot of good, fresh water, but we shouldn't be losing it and not worrying about it. So I want to fix that pipe. You know, I want to, I want to fix that pipe. It needs to be fixed. Um, look at Micron is, is a game changer. Yeah. It's one thing me and the county executive agree on. It's a game changer. But we want to make sure it works for everybody. All right? And we also want to make sure that it's friendly to us environmentally. When I was a child growing up, there was a man that lived across the street from me that had a great job out at the uh, soda ash plant there along by the lake. Um, my name escapes me, same on me. Uh, but he did a good paying job. But we found out that all those waste, they were dumping into the lake, which was wrong. And now we're, we're still paying for that mistake. So I want them to be here, of course, and I want to help them, and they're getting a lot of help from the federal government, a lot of help from the state. Uh, the county executive did get the land, I'll give them credit for that, but other than that, because they would never come if they didn't get the deal from the federal government and the state. But I want to make sure they do it right environmentally. I mean, uh, we don't want to penalize them, but we want to make sure it's done right, so that in 50 years, you know, we're not, having a price tag to fix something that we should have never had to fix. It should be built properly. I do have a follow-up. You, you said something that was a, just a powerful statement. A powerful statement. Um, you said you and the county exact agree that it's a good thing for, for the city of Syracuse and Onondaga County. Uh, but you said it, you want it to be the right thing for everybody. What? What, what does that mean when you say that statement? Can you take a deeper dive with that, please? Well, look, at, there's going to be jobs, they say, paying $100,000 a year, all right? Yeah. Um, well, are those jobs just the people that, um, you know, already made 100000 or the people moving in? If they're moving into the area, we want them to live in, in the city. Um, but we want people that already live here to be able to work out there. All right, so first we gotta train them. Once they're trained, we gotta figure a way to get them there. That can be done. We can train people. We can get them there. But we have to work at it to do it. 
and that's what I would do. It's a, it's a, it doesn't help any of us in the long run if we all don't rise. We have to rise, all of us. It's a, it creates too much of a uh, uh, social problem if you have people over here rising up and people over here stuck in poverty. You're welcome. And my last, I guess, more, more of a uh, observation, and if you would uh, address it too, and then we'll get to our patient uh, audience to ask their questions. Uh, it's about transparency. Um, I read that uh, the $1.5 billion budget has been passed. There's $188 million in reserves, and and this also dovetails with something you put um, high on your top three list of things to address. Um, that, that $188 million in reserve isn't necessarily something that's transparent in terms of spending. And you mentioned the uh, aquarium, uh, the monies that have gone into that. When we talk about uh, housing, uh, and affordable housing and uh, the number of other uh, issues that affect everyday people. Where is the transparency to say these are the main issues, these are the reserve funds that are going to address it? What about transparency? Well, you need cooperation. All right, you need to work together. Um, in that budget, there's about 3.5 million for lead, I believe. Non-restricted. The legislature, the Democrats, wanted to have a point person established because when the health commissioner spoke about the lead, it was very apparent that there was a lack for a point person. So Home Headquarters offered us an opportunity if we would fund at $75,000 the first year, they could have someone tie everything together, all right? And the Republican legislature said, no, that can be in the 3.5. Um, we had another proposal for um, 30,000, I think it was, and they said the same thing. No, well, that could be out of 3.5. Well, if you're talking transparency, why 13 million without blinking an eye for the new docks and out of the lake? And why can't we get whatever it was, 120,000 more to go into this program? It's very expensive to tear down a house. It's expensive to train someone to uh, for lead remediation. And yet we keep on putting it off. Oh, we're, we're, we're doing it, we're doing it. Well, we're not doing it fast enough in my eyes. And I think there's a lot of people out there that would agree with that. Um, I think that $188 million, I think there's more than that. I think there's a lot more than that. Uh, you know, the county executive talks about uh, how conservative he is, <laughs> and yet uh, a year ago, we hired the sheriff of the, that lost the race for $105,000 a year. $105,000 could, you know, at least attempt to solve some problems. Uh, recently, just hired another person for security purposes. The job hasn't been filled in 10 years, but all of a sudden we need this person making whatever it is, 85,000 or something. Um, that's not very transparent if you ask me. And if I'm fortunate enough to win, I'm not gonna do things like that. I'm just not gonna do it. Uh, if a job is needed and you're qualified, I'm gonna hire you. If the job's not needed, I'm not gonna hire you. I don't care how much money you donate to my campaign. I don't, don't care how much we you know, we know each other. There's gotta be an opening, and it's gotta be useful. Not a made up position. Uh, transparency, why, why, when we ask for numbers for the Department of Children's Services, we get one large number. We don't get a breakdown. There should be a breakdown. Now the excuse that they gave um, is that, well, we have to wait to see if the state gets in. 
I think there's programs that are so important that we should fund them ourselves. You know, and if we get the money from the state, well, great, we can lower our costs. But if the program is so good, why aren't we doing it ourselves? A quick example of that is the legislature passed months ago a arts program of uh, $500,000, I think it was. I could be wrong, it could be higher. I don't think it's lower. But in any event, they, and the Republicans all said, oh, this is going to be great for the community. We can do this, do that. And I stood up and said, well, if it's so great, how come we haven't been doing it? Why are we relying on room occupancy tax, which was meant to create more sales tax revenue, to bring more people in to our county, our city, to stay in hotels, to eat in restaurants? Building a statue someplace might be art, it might be a good thing, but how soon do you get your investment back? Uh, I don't think that you get it back very soon, unless it's something that is outrageously people want to see. I mean, a few years ago, we had some art thing at the uh, Everson, and people packed, you know, for days. But that was a one-shot deal. The $85 million for the aquarium, that money was meant to help people. All right? Um, the county executive did a good job during COVID, but he was also very lucky because he got a lot of money from the federal government, a lot of money from the state government, and how he chose to use that for an $85, $85 million aquarium, it, it, it's baffling to me. When we have so many issues, I finally, I just want to say that um, We need to find a way to increase businesses here. If Micron's coming, they'll bring businesses with them. But we need to get help the small mom and pop people survive so they can invest back in the community. Thank you very much, Bill. So I'm just- I have follow-up questions, but I'm being greedy. I don't want to be greedy. So we have, Questions from folks in the audience, correct? Yep. So what we would like to do now is open up the floor to all of our visitors. Is anyone interested in posing a question to one of the, to the candidate? We would greatly appreciate it. And if you're set up to be 30 seconds or less, and then get to your question, um, that would be great. So, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Um, and, you're very uh, welcome. And so my name is Jackie. I part of coalition, but as a person, I still live in the city of Syracuse. Um, oh, I have so many questions, so I'm going to do this one. I am very, very frustrated with our particular, all of our different legislators who are in different districts, and I can't speak for others in terms of their districts, but we don't have, what we lack is information. We're implementing, I call it. Whereas when we see something or know about something like the 500,000 you were talking about, I'm a news junkie. Me and in addition to others, it's in the paper. And it's frustrating because we should be getting it firsthand from our different legislators. So if and when, if and when elected, how do you plan to engage and involve the community in the legislative decision-making process? Um, in other words, not only as the county, county exec, but also to encourage the different legislators to engage their communities because, um, as you see, you know, we have spatterings of people because we do these public forums, and it really, as volunteers, it's our job to get our legislators to talk to their constituents. So how do you plan, what would be your plan to engage and to encourage them? Well, first of all, if I was county executive, I would be having uh, town hall style meetings throughout the whole county, including the city. And they would not be at one o'clock in the afternoon or 10 o'clock in the morning. They would be at nighttime. Um, secondly, uh, the gerrymandering that's gotten done in this county, in this state, quite frankly, is, is uh, wrong in my eyes. Uh, my, if I was to stay on, which I chose last March before I knew about the new district to retire from the legislature, um, that new district is just 
um, goofy. I mean, it actually is two blocks or three blocks wide on, on each side, the east side and the west side. Um, but I found as a legislator, I had these great ideas about communicating with my constituents. Um, but it's a part-time job and it's very hard to work and support your family and communicate the way I wanted to. But for instance, when the OTP was discussed, I passed out, I had people help me, we passed out flyers, but it's impossible to cover my whole district. You know, so I chose, you know, two or three streets in all the areas of the district. Uh, I don't know how, what other legislators do, but I would encourage them always to seek out the input of what the people they are representing, how they feel. But, but that being said, you know, the county executive heard a lot about, you know, not, he, no one wants the aquarium. He got so many complaints, he actually turned off the Facebook page, which I think is unethical myself, but, um, you know, so he didn't listen. I will listen to the people. I guarantee you that. And you can hold me accountable to that. If I can't make a case for something I want to do, then that doesn't deserve to be done. Any other questions on that hobby mic? I'm trying to get one that we're actually working on now. So Allen Foundation has the, you know, the Salt City, they just acquired that other building, 500 South, South Salina. The old Chimes building. The old Chimes building. And so the security is very lacking. Things that don't come out of the paper, we know because we work in the streets. Um, their own security was accosted and beat up in broad daylight, and this is the armed security. I reached out to Allen Foundation, and so they landed kind of on the legislature and the city because that fence that's erected underneath that overpass has pushed the rescue mission person towards South Carolina. So they're there day and night, and, and it is eyesore, and of course they're, you know, they feel like they can loiter, and that's a great place to sit and do whatever it is they're up to. Um, that being said, if elected and when elected, how does the legislature or the leg your position as far as the county said work with not only just police, because we know this is a dying deal because they're not coming in as they should, they're not being hired. Um, law enforcement, even private armed security, and really um, drill down on just securing the area. And it's not just downtown, but because people come in, including us, and we enjoy to sit out and maybe listen to music and be downtown, to know that this kind of thing is happening. They're still bringing in more people than anybody's supposed to be there, yet you don't, you haven't addressed the security issue, which in fact, Allen Foundation said it's not their wheelhouse. Um, we have a problem. I mean, so the question is, how does that, how do you address that? Well, that's a hard problem to address. Let's face it, we have a terrible homelessness situation in our, our county. But that being said, you know, I had some people complain to me about the homeless people on, over down on Teal Lab now, because Catholic Charities moved the, I call it the Oxford Center, down off of Erie Boulevard. Um, so we got it there and we have the rescue mission. Um, but I think you're right. I think we need to find a way uh, to have security. You want to be, you want to be safe walking the streets and you don't want to be, uh, you know, accosted every block, people at panhandling. So we need to find a way to do it. And I think I would work with the mayor, I'd work with the chief of police, I'd work with the sheriff, I'd work with the legislature if they would be willing to work together to help solve this problem. We need more people. You, you, you know, it's as simple as that, you need more people. My question is going to be um, lead in our community. We do remediation. We do almost no removal. Do you think that's the right choice that we're making? And if not, do you think that we could do more removal instead of remediation? I would prefer we do more removal myself. 
That being said, um, we have a housing shortage. And we have to, I think, take each house as, as it goes, as it comes along. But if I had my brothers, if I had the money, I, I think we just get rid of some of these homes and start building things that are more energy efficient, lead free. I mean, that'd be the ideal situation, okay? But you know, it takes money. Of course, we have all this fund balance that we're not using, <laughs> which we could be using. Um, you know, I know I'm gonna be accused of being a tax and spend liberal. They, they do it all the time to me. But this money we have, this fund balance, you know, it's already your money, we've taken it. So let's use it. If we're not gonna give it back to the taxpayer, let's use it to improve our lives for everybody. That's the way I look at that. I'm not a willy-nilly spend, spend, spend. The budget, they, we cut staff through the COVID, we cut employees, we, have a, we had a surplus. Now we're short workers and we have this fund balance. I think we can't go crazy, but I think we can take some of this fund balance to work on infrastructure and work on the lead poisoning. I received a call three weeks ago. I had called this person up. I, I don't know him well, but I know him. He used to be employed by the county. And uh, he took me to lunch many years ago after my health incident. And, you know, he's just a nice man. I don't see him much. But anyways, he says to me, and he, he's a Republican, by the way, <laughs> which I really found interesting, because he says to me, I worked with all these kids after I left the county that clearly had issues from lead poisoning. And yet, here we are, almost 2024, not having a solid plan to get rid of it. I, we need to do that. So I hope that answers your question. What, what would be a comprehensive plan? Well, first of all, in my eyes, we need one person in charge bringing all the groups together home headquarters, um, the community people that are involved, the, the, work, the builders, or the people that are doing the remediation work. Um, that's the first thing. Talk to them, what do they need? Why aren't we tearing down some of these houses instead of trying to re remediate them? Um, you know, again, I'm not an expert, but I know we have to do something and we can't, we should stop patching it. Let's, put it together and solve it. Sorry, I knew you were standing there. And I, it, it can't happen in one year, by the way, but we should have a plan and do it, and have a goal. And be transparent about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Hello, my name is Walter. Um, throughout the years, and I'm not just talking about during the pandemic time period, I have seen a decrease in the services that are for the community, as, and in that decrease, I haven't seen a decline in the employees that the county hired employed, right? But yet, taxes are steady edging up. In my opinion, as a resident, I feel like I'm paying my taxes, more taxes, than getting less value than I was when I first came home. Right? I'm also a business owner. When it comes down to doing business with the county, it would be a difficult task for me unless I list myself as a minority business owner to be able to gain some of the access to the contract. When you list it as a minority contract owner, then there's all types of programs and incentives to get you in. But at the same time, being listed as a minority contractor, there's certain individuals that just don't do it. They already know it, right? Right now, we have the highway coming out. I, it may be more than one question. Good, get, get to the first one again. The same the question. question. What's the the first one is, what are your plans? Because I know a lot of times we have a bill, what do you 
that's right with you. How would you go about without reducing the amount of county employees be able to kind of clean house of the old get along good old boy mentality? Because in my opinion, as long as you keep the people engaged that have been engaged for all these years and you don't put no new blood no new ideas in, 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 in place that you will continue to spin that circle. And particularly with the lead basin, the county and the city has been bouncing that back and forth. I want to know how can you make your ideas work if you don't replace some of the people with new people? Well, first of all, the county workforce has shrunk. In my opinion, it's shrunk too much. Um, secondly, you should know that I'm an outsider. Now, people say, how can you say that you've been in office almost 30 years? Well, it's because I don't play the game, sir. I agree with you. The good old boy network has failed us. It's failed this community. It's failed the state in my eyes, but that's a different story. One example that you might not be aware of, um, my opponent has a lot of signs, big signs up in certain places. Most of them are illegal places. They're in public right-of-ways. That's illegal. They're at certain businesses. Well, if you check the records, those signs at those businesses are people that are donating a lot of money and getting jobs. They're getting work out of that. We tried to pass a called pay to play resolution. Mary Kuhn, a legislator from the Dewitt area, tried to do it. She was shot down. I brought it back. The law department would not even let me put it to the floor. They said it was illegal. And my argument was simply this. It may have been illegal. Other counties have done it. So why can't we try it? But it's not the law department's job to tell me what's illegal or not. We passed a gerrymandering, and we took it to court. We won the first round. That's what we have lawyers for. That's what we have courts for. I wanted this to come and let the legislature vote on it. They could have voted up or down, but at least we got a vote, put them on record. But they wouldn't even let us have a vote on it. If I'm elected, that'll never happen. Our government is formed on separation of powers. Right now, there's no separation. The county executive controls the legislature. He can deny that all he wants, but I can give you example after example of why that's happening. So I, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Walter. Yes, I just have a No, you can't answer questions. I can't ask questions. <laughs> um, I heard what you were saying, and this, is, this goes to um, you know, this is no saying that, you know, if you have a second vote and you put a lot of bars at the bottom of that vote, then the vote, the vote will rise. And so I'm looking at that from an economic perspective within our city and in our county. Syracuse is the, one of the most poverty areas in the country. Part of that is due to opportunity, employment opportunity. Employment opportunity then brings the ability to purchase a home. What is your plan to do two things? One, make sure that true transparency is available within the county so that when jobs are being given, that you try to make sure that you seek people not just outside of the county, not, uh, not outside of the city, but within the city, one. Two, we know my crime is coming in, and you kind of mentioned it. Those jobs will range anywhere between eighty, seven to a hundred thousand dollars. We need to make sure that. What's your plan to make sure that people, specifically people in black and brown communities, are given opportunities to be employed? Because that's the game changer for our community. I love my, I love my baby, but if you don't give me the same opportunity that you give my baby, then how can I help raise the top in our community? What should be a plan? Well, first of all, I, I do believe that the workforce should reflect 
the makeup of the county, all right? So 20% of this county is of people of color, black and brown. So we should at least hit 20%, all right? More if we can, I'm not trying to limit it, just saying we gotta get that 20. I find both in county government and city government, people get jobs for political reasons. I'm not gonna do that. You know, I, I just, I, I, I can't do it. I'm gonna hire qualified people. I don't care how much you help me, how much you donate to my campaign. Your son or daughter needs a job, hey, if there's an opening, I'll consider you, but you gotta get in line like everybody else. That's the way I am. That's the way I've been my whole life. So, I mean, um, as far as the second part there, Afonso, Look at, uh, I want to train people from our county, from our city, so they can get those $100,000 jobs. There's, why can't they get it? They should be able to get them, so let's train them. Yes, sir. How you doing, Bill? My name is Ben McDonald. I'm the owner of uh, BMD Armed Security and Security Guard School. What I do, I teach people how to get the permits, to get a firearm and an individual interested in becoming a security guard, I do that also. But my question to you, what is the squabble between the county executive and the sheriff with respect to shutting down Janesville Penitentiary? Mm. So, I'm, I didn't quite catch that. What, what is I the squabble between the sheriff and the county executive with that the county executive does not want the sheriff to shut down Janesville Penitentiary. Okay, so it's opposite. The sheriff wants to keep it open. The county executive wants to close it. Okay. Okay. So can you tell me what would you do in place of the sheriff? Not the county executive, but the sheriff. What would you do? Because I know that the sheriff right now is pretty irritated with the executive. What would I do? Yes. Well, first of all, there's this thing called the State Division of Corrections. If you want to close a correctional facility, you should bring them in, in and do the study and tell you why it should be closed or what you should do to change it. That's the first thing that should happen. And then if the State Commissioner of Corrections, then we have to figure out how to do it. But you don't do it from the top down, you do it from the bottom up. Secondly, I, I don't know if you're anyone in this building is aware, but when the Democratic sheriff won, there was no cooperation whatsoever with the county. The former sheriff wouldn't return phone calls, emails, nothing. In fact, January 1, he walked into his office and on the round table was a pile of keys. And they had to figure out where those keys went to. So they had several workers spending the whole day trying to find out where keys went to. It was so childish. I, I, I'm ashamed, ashamed that we actually have people that would be that childish working for the county. And my last question is that the county executive spending millions of dollars on a fish aquarium or whatever you want to call it. And you have individuals right now, approximately 30 plus families, that are currently ingesting lead in their homes. Now, um, I spoke with Legislator Garvin, I mean, uh, Garland at a meeting. Why is it that we can't take Use a couple of these parks. Yes, use Mitchell. Why can't we rent some trailers and put those individuals in there, contract with transportation folks to get these people around? Because I think that the city and the county is negligent with respect to allowing these individuals to stay in these homes and breathe in this terrible air. We could talk about lead abatement and everything else, but folks are in there breathing that in, who's going to take care of it? Well, that's, that's my last question. That's what we need to do, sir. 
We need to change that equation. If we have places to move people, I would move them. But I have to be in office before I can say we can do that. Because I don't know what places we have yet. I disagree with you. Oh, okay. That's it. Are you pleased with your response? Well, I, I just wanted to say that the landlords have a responsibility. And if they're not making sure the place is let free, well, they, they, we got to get the people out of there. We, they should be paying rent, that's for sure. We have to force them to do what they're supposed to do, make the place safe. And, and the concept of identifying a place to make sure that they're safe in the interim is really to the crux of the question. What, what are you looking at? You're right, you're not in office yet, but you would actually create some type of space where folks are safe until we can actually find out what we're going to do, either demolish or... Uh, or I would absolutely try to do that, yes. Okay. I, I don't, look at, the society pays a heavy price when we have sick people walking around. Yeah. Not only do the sick people have problems, but it creates other problems for society. We want, we should be about helping people, helping everyone. We can't solve every problem, but we should be about trying to solve the problem. Any, any other questions? Thank you very much, Bill. Any other questions? All right. So, so Bill, we, we want to thank you for being present this evening. Thank you. And, and thank you for being on time. Before we move into the closing, the official closing, I, I wanted to uh, send a shout out to uh, the Southside Coalition, Citizens for Justice and Equality, the Greater Syracuse Southside Neighborhood Associations, and please, um, folks, there's another um, forum taking place on October the 19th. It starts at 5 p.m. It's going to be at Henniger High School, and it's for the district attorney seat. The race um, in, in attendance that evening, Charles Chuck Keller, and also the Republican um, William Fitzpatrick, who's also the incumbent. Also, we would like to thank in attendance for being here this evening, County Legislator Charles Garland. Thank you very much for attending as well. Um, turn it over to my co-facilitator, moderator, to do the closing. The only closing I have really is uh, to ask Bill if you'd like to um, have a closing statement. And uh, also want to thank everyone for your time and being here. Um, it really shows that you are concerned about your community. And uh, I, I, I think um, what, I can, what I've heard from everyone, it matches the things that you said were the main issues on the outside and um, it, that was really important to hear to hear your questions and hear your responses as well. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, the uh, incumbent's not here. Very unfortunate. Um, but we really appreciate your sticking with your commitment for this forum and folks still coming. And so if you would uh, lead us out with a final statement, we would appreciate that. Well, thank you very much for inviting me, and thank you folks for attending. I'm hoping uh, that, I think it was Jackie that said that the county executive was trying to reschedule, and if we can work things out, hopefully we'll do it uh, someplace like this, if it happens. But um, I've been blessed to be in public service, because that's what it is. It's, it, to me, it's a blessing. Uh, I've been able to help people. Uh, I hope to be able to continue that this time as the county executive, so that I can try to solve some of these problems that in my eyes have been for a long, long time not dealt with properly. And the only reason I said I would start the aquarium first is because aquariums lose money. And who's gonna be paying for that aquarium down the road? You know, I might not be around, you know, some of those older folks might not be around, but the younger generation will be around, someone's gonna have to pay for that. And I think that's a terrible, terrible decision. Um, but that being said, I, I, um, I, care, I care about lead poisoning, I care about housing, I care about employment. Um, I've worked all my life, 
Uh, for a while, I had two, sometimes three jobs. You know, I know what it's like to uh, you know raise a family. So um, I want to thank you again for coming, and I hope you have a good evening.